The Harvest Show, where faith makes a world of difference. Today on Harvest, if the universe could speak, what would it say? Astronomer and author Dr. Danny Faulkner shares fascinating findings about the world around us. And if you're already starting to backslide on that New Year's resolution, take heart. Pastor Mark Lance has the perfect teaching to jumpstart 2017. And why is the Prime Minister of Israel in the hot seat? We have an update on the alleged corruption charge charges hounding Benjamin Netanyahu. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the first live edition of the Harvest Show 2017. Valerie Lowe with Stephen Radelich and Drew Summerall. Chuck Freeby will join us in just a moment. But happy New Year to you and to you all as well. Did you I think you've already one? hinted at why, <laughs> unconsciously maybe, why resolutions are just a, a bad idea. I mean, if, you, if you've right. already gone back on your resolutions... And, uh, you know, we're, we're just getting to <laughs> third. <laughs> okay, I can tell you what the probably around corporate America, no more caffeine or limited caffeine, but how many of us started our day with a cup of coffee today? I know well, that's I just a bad idea. I, yeah. <laughs> I, I, couldn't, I couldn't go for that. I, I've done that in the past. Okay. Where I've had, uh, you know, many months where I've just had tea or decaffeinated coffee. But actually, I, I think... It, it, it's just like anything else. As long as you, in moderation, moderation you don't mm -hmm. want to drink too much of it. But like decaffeinated coffee, they have to use chemicals to get the caffeine out of it. So as long as it's uh, You're better or, off organic, with the organic free trade, yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, it's, yeah. It's, it's not bad for you as long as you don't drink too much of it. Yeah. Now, if you're drinking it all day long, that's a, that's bad, right. that's a no, bad idea. That's right. No, I don't drink it all day long. Hey, it is a new year, 2017. Drew, so glad to have you with us so you can give us an update on what we're doing here at Lassie Broadcasting. It's going to be a, a big year. I mean, we were just kind of laughing before we came on. I'm not a big New Year yeah, uh, yeah. celebrator. <laughs> yeah, I, I go to bed at 9 o'clock, regardless of whether or not it's December 31st <laughs> or not. But, you know, as a, as a ministry, as a, as a business, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's the time that, that we reset. Obviously, mm -hmm. we have, uh, you know, budgets and a lot of things like that uh, that we're uh, finalizing and looking forward to a big year. Uh, I'm excited. I think that this is going to be a transformative year for uh, LaCie Broadcasting, an exponential year in growth. I think that's going to be the same for uh, mm -hmm. Feed the Feed Hungry, the hungry who, yep. who had a, a, an exponential year of growth in our Every Child Every Day program yeah. uh, just this last year, but this year is going to be even better. So it's exciting to see all the things that are happening at LaCie mm -hmm. Broadcasting, working in lockstep with Feed the Hungry, mm -hmm. also working in lockstep with uh, LaCie Ministries and everything that Pastor Mark Lance is doing. Uh, I'm not only optimistic, I'm, I'm very excited about all the things that we're going to mm -hmm. accomplish, not only as a Lissy family, but with our partners at home as well. Yeah. That's right. And speaking of partners, I mean, we need partners to continue to help us, you know, with this ministry here at Lissy Broadcasting. You know, Stefan, I know you are out and about and have big plans for Feed the Hungry. Absolutely. What's happening? Well, uh, like Drew mentioned, we have had a great year of mm -hmm. growth in 2016. This year, we're going to be uh, digging in a little bit and Rather than continuing to just grow broad, we're going to start uh, focusing on growing deeper and being more transformative in the project sites where we're ministering to a little over 150,000 children each and every day. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that that number is going to grow, uh, but this year we're focusing on really building some deeper roots in some of our key locations and providing additional resources and tools to the pastors that are part of our program to really bring that transformative effect of the gospel, uh, not only to the children, but to the communities that they serve. So what what, what would you say is a goal for you then, Drew? I mean, I hate to put you in the hot seat mm -hmm. right now, but, I mean, you've cast a vision probably. Oh, this seat's, I can, <laughs> I can feel it. <laughs> I mean, you, you know, thought about there, this there's, last there's, year. There's an ethos that goes all the way back to my grandfather, and it, it started out with, you know, win, win a million. And then it became mm -hmm. win a million every day, and then he would sign his letters for the untold billions yet untold. I mean, I would love for us to say we pass out millions of Bibles. We feed millions of kids every single day. I think that, that that millions and billions, I mean, we do a great job in the thousands. It's time to graduate to those. I mean, certainly we, we've, we've touched millions of people over the lifetime of we broadcasting. Yeah. But I'd love to see us get to that, that yearly, monthly, weekly, even daily, where we have these, these millions of people that we're touching every mm. single day. In other words, we are trying to fulfill the Great Commission. That's we? right. That's mm -hmm. right. And you can help us. You can start by giving us a call at 1-800-365 to connect with us. We want to know your thoughts. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and send your emails directly to the set of harvest at liveatlissy.com. Don't go anywhere. World News begins now.
It is Tuesday, January 3rd, 2017, and here's what's happening in your world. A march in Istanbul today called for peace following Sunday night's attack on a nightclub that killed 39 people. The Islamic State group has claimed responsibility for the gun attack at the Reina nightclub during New Year's celebrations. Today, marchers carried a banner reading, We will not yield for the sake of our future. Once at the site, many laid red flowers in a memorial to the victims of the attack. The ceasefire agreement between the Syrian government and opposition is fragile but holding, despite sporadic crossfires. Last Friday, the Syrian government and opposition reached a ceasefire agreement. Peace talks are to be brokered by Turkey and Russia this month in Kazakhstan. The western suburbs of Damascus have become a hot area for intensive fighting. Syrian forces claim the area is a stronghold of the terrorist organization Al Nusra Front. But the opposition says Syria's government is violating the agreement. U.S. Customs and Border Protection blames a processing system outage for delays at various airports affecting travelers entering the United States. Customs officers continued processing international travelers using alternative procedures until the system came back online, but the waits were longer than usual at some airports. Officers still had access to national security databases, and all travelers were screened according to security standards during the outage. And parts of the southern United States are bracing for more rain today, a day after severe storms killed four people in Alabama. A line of severe thunderstorms threatens possible tornadoes today for southern Alabama, southwest Georgia, and the Florida Panhandle. Four people were killed Monday night when a tree fell on their mobile home in Rehoboth, Alabama. Coming up later, Brian Bush has the latest on the alleged corruption charges facing Benjamin Netanyahu. But up next, astronomer and author Dr. Danny Faulkner discusses fascinating findings about the world. We're right back with more Harvest after this. When Jesus gave his great commission to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, he was not just speaking to his disciples, he was speaking to you and me. Through the outreaches of the Sea Broadcasting's television, shortwave radio, free Bible distribution, and prayer line, souls come to faith and are saved every day. As a financial partner with the Sea Broadcasting, you too will be investing into the lives of men, women, and children as we proclaim God's word around the world together. The Sea Broadcasting partners in faith make it possible for millions to hear the word of God in over 190 countries. You can be a partner in faith with us for as little as a monthly gift of $25. Your gifts help the Sea Broadcasting bring life, hope, and love into a dark world. Call 1-800-365-3732 and tell the prayer operator you want to be a partner in faith. That's 1-800-365-3732. Be a part of the Great Commission. Dr. Danny Faulkner is an astronomer and researcher for Answers in Genesis, holding graduate degrees in physics and astronomy. Dr. Faulkner has taught at the University of South Carolina for over 26 years, and he serves as the editor of the Creation Research Society Quarterly. There have been thousands of, of papers uh, for, <laughs> from numbers of publications as well. Uh, Dr. Faulkner, good to have you with us. We're talking about the created cosmos, what the Bible re reveals about astronomy. And uh, tell us a little bit about, about the topic at large and uh, why you've dedicated so much time and interest uh, to the cosmos. <laughs> Well, you know, the Bible really speaks a lot about astronomical bodies. When I began researching this book a few a couple of years ago, I was really quite taken aback just how many biblical allusions and references there are to astronomical things, enough mm -hmm. to fill a book. Mm -hmm. And there has been a few books written in the past, but it's been more than 100 years at the time. Was really? Right. Yeah. There were a couple of men uh, named E. Walter Maunder in the early part of the 20th century wrote a really definitive book, I think, but it's kind of outdated now, so it needed a fresh look. That's amazing. So really this topic then of, of aligning the theology of creation and the physics and astronomy of creation is something that's been re relatively un untouched. Yeah, people kind of nibble that with different topics, you know, focusing on one thing or the other, but I just wanted to go through and just really analyze and, and discuss all the biblical allusions and then talk about different questions and issues that come up. The mm -hmm. book's in four parts where we move from things the Bible definitely says about astronomy to things that are a little less speculative questions and then some things that are just kind of not in the Bible at all, but people think they are. Okay. So. okay, so what does the Bible definitely say? I know it says a lot about <laughs> astronomy, so maybe one or two points. Well, first of all, we have the creation, the creation mm -hmm. week when God made everything. 
made the stars on day four. I think he made space on day two. That's a position I've come to in the last couple of years. Uh, we have apocalyptic things coming uh, in the, in the uh, prophetic books, New and Old Testament, uh, signs and wonders in the heavens. What do those mean? I do a mm -hmm. pretty good discussion of those uh, sorts of things. So uh, people ask about uh, Hezekiah's uh, sundial, you know, the sun moving, moving back. back on his dial, mm -hmm. uh, and also with uh, Joshua's long day. These are anomalies you find there. So uh, just a, and some constellations and stars are mentioned. Orion is mentioned in Pleiades. It's a star cluster. Orion's a constellation uh, mentioned three times in the Old Testament. Uh, God makes allusions to these things many times. The word heaven appears, I think, uh, in the Old Testament about 400 times. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's talking about the astronomical realm, sometimes it's not. So it's a, mm. so it was a fun, fun book to work on. So uh, since we are very close uh, here at the beginning of the year to the Christmas season, and we think about the Christmas star mm -hmm. uh, from an astronomist's and theologist's <laughs> point of, of standing, uh, what was the, the star oh, of Oh boy, we have what, uh, just a few minutes, right? Yeah. Not an hour or two. <laughs> Their whole book's written on it. I've been thinking about writing a book myself, and I have one chapter in this book. Um, but, you know, I look at it as an astronomer, I look at it, we only have it mentioned about three times in 12 verses in Matthew's Gospel, and it's um, not much detail given, mm -hmm. and a lot of misconceptions people have about it, but I, as I've examined it, and I've come to the conclusion that no known astronomical body really fits. Mm -hmm. There are different theories about planetary alignments, a mm -hmm. comet, and a supernova, and all these sorts of things, but I, I just have problems with all of those. And so... Um, I, I decided a long time ago, I think it probably was a, was a supernatural sort of thing. God made a special light in the sky. I got to realize the word star in, the, in general usage until fairly recently referred to any bright object in, in the, the night sky. sky. Yeah. And today we distinguish between stars and, and planets, planets and yeah. galaxies and nebulae. But, you know, even a plane flying at night with its lights on, that would be a star to ancient people. Mm -hmm. So if God would have made some sort of light, you know, a few hundred, few thousand feet up that kind of hovered and moved where he wanted it and did what he wanted it to, it would really fit all of those things. And it would explain a lot of things like why nobody else seemed to have noticed a star. Well, if it was only visible to a small group of people in a geographic location that God wanted, nobody else would have noticed it. Mm. Dr. Faulkner, what's the difference between astronomy and astrology? Got a chapter on that, too. Okay. <laughs> it's very confusing. We think biology and, mm -hmm. and geology, that logos ending, makes you think it's the science. Um, astrology, I would say today, is the uh, is a belief system. It's a religion, ancient pagan religion, that the belief that the uh, heavenly bodies or locations of the sky affect our lives and our destinies. Astronomy is the science of the heavenly bodies. And the reason why the two uh, are so closely related, because they, for, for most of human history, they were. You know, up until about 400 years ago, astronomer, astrologer, same thing. But with the rise of modern science in the 17th century, the two went their separate ways. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's very confusing. I, I, I wish I had a dollar every time somebody called me an astrologer. Okay, but <laughs> <laughs> because they should not be used interchangeably. They Those shouldn't. Are two oh, no, different. they shouldn't. Yeah. No. So what does the Bible, the Bible warns us about astrology. Oh, yeah. Uh, there are, particularly later on, apparently in the Old Testament, uh, early on, astrology wasn't a problem. Later on, the ancient pagan cultures were really wrapped up into it. We think most of the astrological lore we get today comes from Babylonia, and that was kind of late in their influence there. But there are specific warnings against uh, following astrology and astrologers, but there are also warnings against other pagan deities. You know, these people were worshiping Saturn and Jupiter, and these are Venus. These are, these are supposed to be manifestations of the gods, but they're just planets. They look like stars in the sky, and God definitely told us not to worship these uh, these these beings or these things in the sky, God created them, so they're not really powerful beings at all. Uh, some people, some Christians, unfortunately, view astrology as kind of a harmless diversion, but I beg to differ. It really is an ancient pagan religion, and it detracts us from worshiping the true and living God. Mm. Now, when it comes to the created cosmos, what the Bible reveals about astronomy, uh, who, who's your target audience here? What is it that you're really hoping to uh, to leave behind? And like what, what kind of level of technical <laughs> expertise is needed for, it, it's for the not, text? It's not a technical level at all. I, I use um, some Hebrew words and stuff. I got some help from that from Lee Anderson, who's uh, assisted me very ably on this. So I'm not a Hebrew scholar in the least. But um, 
It's written for the informed Christian who wants to learn more. I think high school would be an up from there. Any, any adult would get a lot out of it. I don't mm -hmm. go into technical terms at all because it's not a book about astronomy per se. Mm -hmm. I'm working on a companion book to this, by the way, that is about astronomy and creation, more in the science, but this is just about biblical things. So anybody mm -hmm. who's interested in what the scriptures have to say, I think every Christian then should be interested in this book. Mm -hmm. And what about some of the, uh, the uh, Maybe the conflicts. Uh, I know that mm -hmm. answers in Genesis and uh, creation uh, research, young earth theory, mm -hmm. but what about the, the controversy with respect to the amount of time it takes light to get from point A to um, point B and how could that all be set in place if, <laughs> if yeah. there was that's a young a, that's earth? A, that's a big question. It's a huge question. You know, they, we, we think the world's only thousands of years old, but we think that there's uh, we th believe these, these galaxies are millions and sometimes billions of light years away from us. So how can we see that? That's, we call that the light travel time problem. Mm -hmm. I know of at least five or six different solutions, including one I've, I've actually tried to develop a bit. Um, but you know, the situation is even worse because Adam had a, had a light travel time problem. God made him on day, day six. We made stars on day four, two days difference. The nearest star was only is more than four light years away. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that in the first night, this day six ended, day seven begins, it gets dark, Adam looked up in the sky. I don't think he saw nothing. I think he saw stars pretty much as we see today. So God had to bring that light during the creation week. And I think he did it miraculously. A lot of my colleagues in creation science movement, we want, they want to look for a physical or natural explanation. Mm -hmm. But what's normal or natural about the creation? I mean, during the whole creation week, just miracle after miracle, why do we suddenly want God to use a, use a uh, mechanical means there, so our physical means? Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I believe that too is a miracle. God's not doing that much anymore, but he's sustaining the creation. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's one of the issues we take, take in the book there. Hmm. I think it's in the book of Romans, the first chapter. You know, people talk to me, atheists, we interview them. I've interviewed them before. And they say, you know, how can someone in a foreign country who knows, I mean, doesn't even speak English, has never heard the gospel, become a born again Christian. And I said, well, they can look into the heavens and see that God is real and that he exists, the creation. Kind of talk about that a little bit. Is that a good defense that I use? I think it is. Uh, you know, Romans uh, 1 does tell us that we are without excuse. Uh, you, you, the, the, he goes through the list of what's, what's wrong with humanity right. in that first chapter of Romans. And he comes to the conclusion, well, you know, there is a creation. There, God has revealed himself in the sense of his power and his might. He does exist. Two things you can learn from the creation. It's not enough to tell you everything you need to know, but at least should get you started and start searching. And I think if you really start to search, the Lord will provide a means for the word to get uh, to be brought to you, a gospel message, missionary work or whatever. But yeah, the, the, we're without excuse because of the, of the very creation around us reveals God's existence. Mm. And you know, Psalm 19 is tied in with that, with the heavens declaring God's glory. Uh, to me as an astronomer, as a scientist, I can't fathom uh, how a person can examine the world around us and come to the conclusion there's no God. That doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, so, something doesn't come from nothing. Mm -hmm. There must be a creator there. Mm -hmm. Dr. Faulkner, good to have you with us today. We're going to have you back for sure on The Harvest Show to talk about the created cosmos and to connect with Dr. Danny Faulkner. You can go to AnswersInGenesis.com or go to our website, Harvest-TV.com. You'll find the easy way to link back to his site and pick up a copy of this fantastic text. Coming up later, Pastor Mark Lance with today's connections. But up next, Brian Bush with the latest news that's breaking in Israel. We'll be right back. You know, it only takes $6 to feed one of these children for a whole month. That's why we're asking you to become part of every child every day. These children have fled the horrors of war from South Sudan, but they're receiving a daily meal, and they're receiving not just food, but the hope of a brighter future. Whatever it is that you can do, we need your help today because the children keep coming out of South Sudan, and we need to feed them. We can't say to one, you can have lunch today, but sorry, no lunch for you. If you want to do more and be more, but your stamina runs out of steam, you need the top-selling Essential Vitamin Mineral Pack by Dr. Rodrigo Rodriguez. The Doctor's Making Healthy Choices Essential Pack costs only $59.95, but the health benefits are priceless. You get Mineral Concentrate, an unsurpassed formula of trace minerals essential to good health. 
Omega-3 for overall vascular support and healthy brain function. Vita Sprouts, a superior form of multivitamins. And you get Sol You See for a strong immune system. That's mineral concentrate, Omega-3, Vita Sprouts, and Sol You See. An incredible value for only $59.95. And if you act now, shipping is free. Call 1-800-965-2345 or go to mhclife.com to get the doctor's essential pack from Making Healthy Choices. That's 1-800-965-2345 or mhclife.com. Hello, everybody. It's a cold afternoon here in Jerusalem. Let's bring you up to date on the news. After the declared ceasefire in Syria, Syrian rebel groups now say that they are suspending their participation. The move comes after they claim both Russia and Syrian forces have continued to carry out both aerial bombings and artillery strikes. The rebels had been in preparations for peace talks planned by Russia and Turkey for later this month to be held in Uzbekistan. The hunt for an attacker who killed 39 and wounded more than 60 at a Turkish nightclub on New Year's Eve is intensifying. Police have made raids in Istanbul and arrested 12 people last night, with some reports saying the suspect's wife and two children are among those detained. Other reports say the authorities know who it is that they are looking for, but have not released the gunman's name. Police have fingerprints, photo, videos, along with the eyewitness descriptions of the suspect who is believed to be of Uzbekistan or Kazakhstan nationality. Islamic State has claimed responsibility for the hyenas attack. And lastly, Israeli police have questioned the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu for three hours at his residence in Jerusalem last night. The three-person panel is part of an inquiry into corruption allegations. Mr. Netanyahu has denied any wrongdoing. This is the latest in scandals involving the Prime Minister since the late 1990s. Netanyahu was asked about the receiving and retaining of state gifts and financial benefits from businessmen all totaling together well into the hundreds of thousands of dollars. Friends, that's a wrap of your news. The Harvest Show continues right after this. Got Facebook? Follow The Harvest Show. Comment and share your opinions on current events. See new after the show guest interviews. Watch my updates and inspiration from Israel exclusively for Facebook. Facebook.com slash The Harvest Show. Like us today. Hey everybody, I am so excited to dig into 2017 with you. I have got a high level of expectation that but what this year is going to hold for us. So today I want to talk to you and Thursday as well about a subject that I've entitled Reboot. Now, when you look at that word reboot, by definition, it simply means to turn a computer off and then immediately turn it back on again to start from scratch. So I want to use that to start 2017 by rebooting. Turn off what happened to you last year and start this year with a clean slate, a new beginning. So I want to use the story that Jesus told in Luke chapter 15. Let's go to verse 11, where Jesus said, A certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided to them his living. First of all, I want you to see the opportunity that you have been given. You see, each of these boys was allocated a portion of their father's goods. It wasn't something that they earned. It wasn't something that they worked for. This substance was given to them simply because they were born into this family. Now, I want to bring this down to you today. Each of us have been blessed by our Heavenly Father with an allocated amount of gifts, abilities, potential. It's not something that you've worked for, not something that you earned, but rather from the moment you were born, God gave you this gift. But now notice in our story, Luke chapter 15, that the younger of these two took this opportunity that had been given by his father and wasted it. The Bible said that not many days after the younger son gathered all together, took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance because of these decisions he made. The substance that really could have brought great prosperity into his life was wasted. He had nothing to show for what he'd been blessed with. 
Friend, listen, you may be beginning this first week of 2017. You look at last year, you feel as though you've wasted the opportunity that God gave to you. You're not where you thought you'd be. You didn't achieve what you thought you would achieve. But there's a phrase in this passage that I love. Verse 17, the Bible said, he came to himself. You see, this young man came face to face with who he had become, where his choices had taken him. Friend, you and I together sitting down, this is our moment. We are coming to ourselves. We're becoming aware that now is the time to change. Now, I know change is not easy, but if we're going to become somebody that we've never been, change is inevitable. So take this week. Consider where you are in life. It's time to reboot. It's time to begin again. Take the potential, the gift God's given to you. Turn it on again. Turn what happened last year off. Let's reboot together. Charge into 2017 and be who God wants us to be. That's fantastic. Man, what a way to start the year. I know, right? Amen. I mean, the fact that you get a do-over. Absolutely. Not just, I mean, from one year to the next, but daily. Absolutely. We can just put it all aside, start up all over again because God's mercy and His grace is fresh every day. Right. And the hard thing is to turn off what happened yesterday. Okay. Mm -hmm. Turn off what happened last year. You know, forget those things and just say, God, this is a brand new opportunity for us. Let's take advantage of it. God's given us this gift, this ability. Let's fulfill it for yeah. his glory. Like Paul said, forgetting those things which are behind, pressing forward towards the goal. Let me ask you a quick question. We just have a minute, Pastor Mark. Uh, excitement and enthusiasm, absolutely critical. Right. Momentum and, and sustainability, also yeah. critical. So how do we keep going with the new? It all comes down to what you do daily. Mm -hmm. In mm -hmm. fact, I think the secret to success in anybody's life is in your daily routine. You've got to put the daily disciplines and the habits. If you want to lose weight, you can get excited about it, but you got to get on the treadmill. You got to, you got to eat right. Mm -hmm. If you want to get your spiritual life up, you can get excited and get all charged up about it, but it comes down to that daily time of prayer, daily time in the Word. So I would say list out the daily habits that you're going to have to implement into your routine mm -hmm. that are going to change your life so you can reach your potential. And then you'll see that momentum and build and Absolutely. you'll keep going on the path you need to go. On. Absolutely. Fantastic. So good to have you with us, Pastor Mark. Look forward to uh, Thursday and the mm -hmm. rest of this week's teachings. I want to encourage you today, if you want to start this year off with a time of prayer and you haven't prayed with anyone yet, well, you can give us a call at our prayer line center at 1-800-365-3732. Let's pray together to see 2017 be the best it can be in Jesus' name. Thanks for joining us on Harvest. We'll see you tomorrow. The Word of God has the power to transform broken lives, but only if we share it with those who don't know the good news. Each $5 you give between now and December 31st will provide a Bible to one person. A gift of $5 provides one Bible, $25 sends five, and a gift of $180 provides a case of 36 Bibles to those in need. Pray about your gift and then call 1-800-365-3732 to give today. The Harvest Show is produced by La Cee Broadcasting and is viewer supported by people just like you. Thank you for inviting us into your home today.